Hi, I'm Patty Sue Spires, and this is Road Trip Television. What I do is go all over the state. I talk to fascinating people in wonderful places. Sometimes the fascinating people are everyday people doing outstanding things. Today we are at the Calf Lowell Ranch, Colorado Agricultural Leadership Foundation. Nothing happens in a vacuum. And my friend, Brooke Fox, took a bunch of acreage and she has turned it into a nonprofit foundation all about connecting kids to agriculture. Way to go, Brooke. Thank you so much for letting Road Trip Television come to you today. Today is special. We are harvesting. Tell me about that. Well, today is Harvest Day. It's a celebration of the agricultural feat of making sure that we have food to eat. So we're here and we celebrate by um, having pumpkins. We've grown all the pumpkins that you see out here. And it's just a wonderful day to get, bring people out to the ranch and learn about agriculture and where their food comes from. All right, we're going to talk to some of these people. We're going to, uh, I would say, talk to the horses, but we're going to pet the horses and look at the horses. They're all the way from France. That's where they started. And they're here today for this very special event, which really culminates after a summer of a lot of exciting um, and interesting events and camps. And I got to tell you, I was out here in May. And as I met and talked to some of the people out here, some children actually don't know where carrots come from. It's true. There's a lot of people out there that really don't understand where their food comes from. They think that it comes from the grocery store. And so that's why we're out here. We want people to understand um, that there are people that are growing their food. There are places like this where we're growing the food. So it's really important that we give them that authentic experience of picking a pumpkin, grow, pu pulling a carrot out of the ground, um, planting seeds, and really understanding, again, where their food comes from. As the summer progressed and this last summer was a little bit of a tough one I'll tell you that we found that people loved coming out here putting their hands in the soil and planting and now those same people some of them are six years old are also harvesting we're going to talk to them and this is road trip television i am out here right now with brooke fox executive director of colorado Agricultural Leadership Foundation and all the fun events that are going on here and they go on all year long. That's what's awesome. All right, stay with us as we go over and talk to some friends at the Chuck Wagon. As we're out here with Calf Lowell Ranch, we've got a real chuck wagon. Chuck wagon cooking is a little bit different from 2012 baking is what I understand. Well, it's definitely different because we're using fire. I mean, we use charcoal and, and, and hardwood coals. Um, and what are you making here? Now we've got a apple crisp going in the top one and we've got a biscuits going in the bottom one. Okay, now how in the world do you know how to do this? Uh, it's mostly trial and error. There, the Boy Scout manual tells you a specific heat per number of coals, but when the wind's blowing and you're outside, that doesn't necessarily hold true. So I just, I'll use my hand on the coals and I'll see how hot it is. If it's too hot to hold it there, then I know I got too much heat, and, but it's just, it's a trial and error kind of situation. Okay, and as we're standing here, we have got a chuck wagon behind us. We have got a tent over us. How much of this is original to how it was done in 1840 something? Well, it's all pretty original. Um, this would be the fly is what they call the canvas over there. And that's to protect the cook and so on. Um, it's not the same piece of canvas that they had over the wagon itself. Um, but they had poles and they'd string it out just like this. Uh, they didn't have an apple peeler. Well, they had apple peelers, but not quite the same as the one we've got. Okay, so this demonstration is so young people, uh, old people like me, all of us can know how it was done when actually this ranch first got here. Yeah, you know, the uh, Dutch ovens have been around for, I don't know, several hundred, like 100 years or more, yeah, a couple hundred years, I guess. 
And you can bake in them, you can cook meat in them, you can roast, you can do whatever. Um, and then Charlie Goodnight set up the first chuck wagon after the Civil War, and that's when they were moving herds of cattle up from Texas. That's uh, what they used was a chuck wagon to cook for a cowboy crew uh, along the trail. Okay, and Charlie Goodnight is who? I uh, started the Goodnight Trail. He was a Texas Ranger down in uh, in Texas during and right after the Civil War, and then. When they were trying to rebuild the cattle herds back east, they started driving the wild Texas cattle north. And the Goodnight Trail, he was one of the first guys that drove cattle north. This is the kind of thing you're going to learn out at Colorado Agricultural Leadership Foundation Ranch, the Lowell Ranch. It's right here in Castle Rock. I'm Patty Sue Spires, and this is Road Trip Television. And now you can have one, but you'll burn your tongue. I have you to wait. wait. I have to wait. Yeah. Okay. Dead, the original house that was built on the Lowell Ranch, I don't know how many years ago, but Jim Weglars, our historian, will tell us. <laughs> Patty, good to see you today. The house that we're standing in front of is the Lowell house that was built in the early 1930s. We are pretty certain that it was a Sears kit house. Unfortunately, the only way to uh, really tell is you'd have to tear apart some of the walls in there and see if you can find the numbers on the pieces, and I don't think the owners of the house would like us to do that. So, but the Lowell Ranch here is a centennial ranch here in Colorado. The Lowell family has been on this property for over 100 years. There actually is, a little bit further east of us, there's an original homestead house that was built by some other people back in the 1870s that's currently being used as the chicken coop. Again, function over form. Um, and again, um, CAF really orchestrates this day and they invite our group, Historic Douglas County, basically to staff the Lowell House and let some people know about some of the history of the house, the property, and so on and so forth. You know, it's, and what's neat about this, Jim, is as you stand here and we're looking at all the beautiful trees and the shrubs and all that makes up this ranch, the Lowells brought that with them when they came. That is correct. Um, and, and again, the Lowell family itself, and before John and B. Lowell, who lived, on, lived in this house for roughly 75 years, were some of their other family members who were out here just after the homestead days. There are some unique features on this property, and I'm sure later on we'll see if we can get a picture, but there's actually some 130-year-old weeping willow trees here that at the base are more than, they're like 25 to 30 feet in circumference. Those trees were brought here by a homesteader from Missouri back in the 1870s. And the reason those trees, which are not native to Colorado, thrive, because the water table here on the ranch was extremely high. Okay, we're going to go look at the original house that is now a chicken coop, chicken but it's coop. still really fun to look at. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some of the animals that are flying <laughs> in and out of it are even yeah, more interesting. Are running around, yes. And it's all right here on the Calf Lowell Ranch, which is minutes from Colorado Springs, minutes from Denver. I'm Patty Sue Spires, and this is Road Trip Television.
plant stuff. You do? Yep. And then did you come out and water them? Yes. Huh? And then did you see them grow? Yep. <laughs> and when you came out today, they were all big, huh? Yep. And I love pumpkins. They're so orange. They're so orange. <laughs> did you have fun out here today? Yep. Ethan. And how old are you? Five. Great. Thank you so much for letting us talk to you. Have fun with your pumpkins. <laughs> so those are your little guys yes. and you brought them out here. Yes. When did you start doing this? We've lived down here for five years and we started bringing them here four years ago when they were two. And so tell me the process. What, what, how involved are they in the, in the whole process of, of harvest, at the end harvesting? Well, I know um, this past May they just started having May Days where kids and families could come out and plant the seeds right here in this exact spot, and they watered them. Um, so that was the first year they did that. So now the boys have even more involvement this year because they get to come back. So they're five years old now, and starting at two, they start coming out, planting their seeds, and then you brought them back to harvest. So it kind of gives them a good purpose for coming back because then they get to see what they planted and grew. So that's always really great. <laughs> Why do you think this is important? I think it's important because I know a lot of kids are indoorsy these days and there's always a computer in front of them. But I, I know with our kids, we like for them to be outside and if they can see what they can plant in the ground and see what grows, that's great. It just gives them more of a purpose to be outside, I think. So they love it. They love to be outside doing anything. And where are you from? We're from Castle Rock just up the road. <laughs> and so you put this on your schedule every year and my guess is they come out, they jump out of the car and they go running down the road. They do, they're excited. We go and check in and then it's just a free-for-all. They want to see the animals, they want to run to the pumpkin patch, so it's really great. Awesome. All right, we're going to now go and talk to some more friends who are out here having a blast in the country, which is only 15 minutes from what? Colorado Springs, right here in Castle Rock, 20 minutes from Denver. It is Calf Lowell Ranch, and I am Patty Sue Spires, and this is Road Trip Television. Colorado Life is the magazine that explores Colorado in six beautifully illustrated issues a year. From the prairies to the mountains to the western slope, you'll visit the wonderfully unique communities of our state in every issue. Discover the rich history of our heritage, pan for gold with a miner, stay in a historic hotel, or ride on a steam-powered train. Take adventures to the state's stunning natural landscapes like the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Get a taste of a master chef's flavorful recipe that you can make in your own home. See the secrets of Colorado's creative artists, musicians, and poets. Find festivals and events in every region of the state. Subscriptions are only $21 for one year or $38 for two years. To subscribe, call 970-480-0148 or visit coloradolifemagazine.com. Colorado Life Magazine, the magazine that explores Colorado. Subscribe now. This special road trip television show featuring Colorado Agricultural Leadership Foundation is made possible through the generous support of Aloha Trust. Out here at Calf Lowell Ranch, one of the biggest deals is connecting kids to agriculture. We have a young man here, I think is a success story, Griffin's son. Griffin, tell us exactly what you did today. Well, I harvested some vegetables out of the garden, and they're good, fresh vegetables, so yeah. 
All right, you tell me exactly what you did. You walked out there, you dug around. T walk us through it. Well, when I walked out there, I saw some, I saw a lot of stuff sticking out of the ground, and I pulled it from the base, and I was getting carrots and beets out of the ground. All right, show us your beet. Hold it up here so the camera can see it. This is what you have harvested today right out here at the Colorado uh, Agricultural Leadership Foundation, which is all about telling kids this did not come from the grocery store. This came out of the ground right here today. And you too can come out here just like Griffin. You plant the seed, you water the seed, and you come back and you harvest the seed. What a concept. It feels like it's in the olden days, doesn't it? Yes, yes it does. And is it fun? Tell me what you think about this. I think it's great because it teaches kids responsibility and lets them ha get away from city life and stuff like that and actually have some fun pulling vegetables. Griffin is going to run for president in a few years, so be looking for him. <laughs> Tell me this, Griffin, we're out here, we've got sheep, we've got sheep dogs, we've got tractors, we've got hay rides, we have got blacksmith shops, we have also got a wonderful old house that was built from Sears Roebuck, all right? Tell me, what's your favorite thing you've done since you've been here today? Probably the blacksmith. All right, tell me, what, what is a blacksmith doing? Well, right now he's eating lunch, except uh, later, except after he's done, he said he was going to keep on doing what he's doing, which is bending some steel. All right, how does he bend the steel? What does he use? Um, right now, he's using hot coals with a canvas over it so that the rain doesn't put it out with a bucket of water next to it so he can cool the steel off. And there's a, a, a crank fan that he uses that heats up the coals and it will make it hot enough to soften the steel. Okay, Griffin has done it to me. I want to go see this. This is Patty Sue Spires, Road Trip Television. Go with us over to the blacksmith right now. One of the things I love about the Calf Lowell Ranch is their sheepdog trials. When I was here in May, it was mesmerizing watching these border collies herd the sheeps, move them. Okay, look at me. I'm calling them sheeps. That's not even the right word, right? I use sheeps. <laughs> when you're mad at them, right? Oh, no. I use other words when I'm mad at them. All right. Tell me this, sir. What is your part in this whole process? And tell me how it's done. You just have to work your dog and they do go by your whistle or your command. And it's kind of a partnership. You have to be on the same page. And if you get really harsh with them, they don't, they don't like it. They want to please you, so. How long have you been doing this? Approximately about five years now. Okay. <laughs> And why is it so much fun for people to watch, for people to be part of? Uh, the part of it is you bring the dog along as a pup and you teach it as it grows up and that. And to me, it's just a lot of fun. And uh, that's all. And what is the history behind it? They came from the uh, 
the borders between Wales and Scotland, and that's why they're called bio, border collies. And they are a working dog back there. In fact, my dogs work, they just don't trial. I have sheep at the house that they have to work. And this is just kind of like an extracurricular activity for them, and they enjoy it. They just enjoy working. How long does it take to, to take a puppy, a Border Collie puppy, and train him or her up to the level of being able to trust them to do their job? Well, you start them, each dog is different. You start them out about five months, six months, learning some commands, and then uh, you take them to sheep for the first time, probably when they're about 10 or 12 months. And then you're looking at, depending upon the dog, they're all different, just like kids. You're looking at between six to eight months to get them where you can trust them and send them out and let them do their job. And Jack, um, what would you say is your favorite part of this job? Of the, the trialing is the trialing itself and meeting the people and talking with them because you always have problems with any dog and no few dogs are the same. So you get with other people and say, well, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And then you help people. It's a, it's a really a friendly type atmosphere. Everybody's helping everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank and we're going to be standing here watching it. Okay. Wow. Thank you. This is Patty Sue Spires, and this is Road Trip Television. We are out at the Calf Lowell Ranch having the time of our life. There is something for everybody out here. We're right here, right between... Uh, Colorado Springs and Denver in Castle Rock, Colorado. highlights are these beautiful French horses. Okay, now they're actually from France, is that right? Yes, they're a Percheron draft horse and they're originally from France and they were brought over here and they've been used for uh, in the farms and then uh, for show and everything else as far as uh, you know the farm classes and stuff. Okay, and this gentleman actually raises them. You live out in the Castle Rock area? Yes, we live south of here, close to Larkspur, and we have six of the Percheron draft horses right now. Okay, now uh, several of us said, let's go and look at the Clydesdales. Do you get that a lot? We get that all the time. Okay, what's the difference? Well, the difference is the Clydesdales came from Scotland. These come from France. We, there's a Belgian breed. There's a, there's a Shire horse, too. That, there's four main breeds of draft horses. And the, the Percherons were the ones that we fell in love with. Well, you know, when you think about horses and various livestock, they usually have a special thing that they were bred to do. What were these bred to do? These originally were bred to be the... Uh, um, for war use. The, the knights with the armor and everything used to ride them and, and fight in the wars over, over in Europe. Okay, so they're no wimpy horses. You know what they say about the French, that they like, you know, better at love than at war. But these horses, they know about war. Well, they're, they're heavy horses. They can be used in the, in the fields. 
and they can be used on the streets to pull big wagons. So they, they have a multiple of uses. And what they're doing here is taking children and their parents and riding up and down this beautiful dirt road looking at the ranch and all the wonderful sights out here at Calf Lowell Ranch. This is Patty Sue Spires and I am Road Trip Television. The Colorado Agricultural Leadership Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to connecting people to agriculture through authentic educational programs, community projects, and special events. You can donate to CAF nestled on the beautiful and historical Lowell Ranch. It's all about letting people know of the importance of agriculture in everyday life. They do this through programs such as Calf Kids, where they teach kids how to raise livestock. Hey, no ranch, no problem. They also have a community garden on Lower Ranch to take the mystery out of gardening, connecting folks to agriculture out on the beautiful Plum Creek, south of Castle Rock. Donations to CAF will keep this amazing education of farming and ranching going, and it also pays high school students for teaching at Camp CAF this summer, all while helping them learn the importance of hard work as they gain a sense of accomplishment in growing food, taking care of livestock, and maintaining property as they reach out to kids who get a chance to romp in the creek, care for a farm animal, and plant a crop of pumpkins. For more on Colorado Agricultural Leadership Foundation, go to thecalf.org. That's thecalf.org. And go visit them, and don't forget to tell them Road Trip Television sent you. And for more Road Trip Television shows, go to vimeo.com slash television. That's vimeo.com slash television. And thank you for watching Road Trip Television. I'm Patty Sue Spires, and I will see you on the road.